Thank you, Jesus. We can trust you, Lord. We can trust you in the midst of all storms, in the midst of pain and frustration, inability to sleep, every bit of device that comes against us. God, we can trust you. You love us and you care for us. And we need to believe that, that you care for us. You gave your only begotten son such love that you had. How can we question how much you care for us, Lord Jesus? Thank you so much for your life, for your hope, for your strength. You are our help, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Matthew 11, it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? Prophet? Yea, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say to you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they did not repent. Woe unto thee, Cherezin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works would have been, which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, 
I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all that are lab that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Thank you, God, for your yoke, that you take that heavy yoke from us, oh God. We thank you for that so much, Lord. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk about prayer. The first example that I'm giving is about praying for our lives. Jesus gave the example. He said to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Always saying, Holy to you, God. Holy are you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The second example is that we pray that there are laborers that will go to the harvest. The Lord has a harvest that he needs workers out there calling in the people that are ready to hear about the Lord. In Luke 10 and 2, Jesus said, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. We pray Right now, as we've been praying for every nation, every people, every language, every tribe, every one of them, we pray for laborers. We pray for miracle to reach them, for Bibles to be brought to them by whatever means, for there to be signs and wonders, for them to see the Lord in whatever fashion it takes for them to have a miraculous understanding of Jesus and his love for them. We pray that these laborers, whoever they are and wherever they are and by what means they need to do it, that they would have that harvest ready, that they would draw in people to Jesus, that they would shine the light, that they would speak with grace and truth as Jesus has taught us, that they would always bring with grace the truth of the Lord. The people will repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray for those laborers. They won't bring condemnation because God is not, he is not condemning us. He is not a God of condemnation. That is Satan's voice. So every laborer that goes forth, that you would have grace and you would have truth because there will be many people that you will face in every kind of life, situation, gods that they worship, uh, demonic involvement, witchcraft, other types of sin in their life. We have to have grace and truth. We also don't want to stop praying for others we want to pray without ceasing we're instructed in first thessalonians 5 and 17 pray without ceasing in acts 12 and 5 peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church 
unto God for him.